You said that your college master said, if you will it, it is no dream. And that was impactful. And that stuck with you all those years, even though you remarked that you thought it might be a corny statement, but it still was impactful for you. Why, why yeah. that stick? It just had, I mean, that's the kind of inspirational, like you can just make the world however you want. You know, I think most people are consumers of life. And most, most people in most t- places and most times in their life are like, they are consuming, they're kind of doing what society or your boss or the, you know, kind of companies tell you you should be doing, um, tell you what you should be doing. And they kind of just do that, right? Like whether it's, uh, you know, you're consuming somebody's restaurant or you're consu- at work, you're like doing, showing up to do a job that someone else has kind of defined and dictated the parameters of. And um, I think, you know, human beings have the ability to think outside the box. There were no boxes originally and just like figure things out and design things and life the way that they want it to be, you know, for them, for themselves. Like every thing that exists in society was designed by some person, right? Like from all the foods you eat to the house you, house, house you live, in, live in to like the way traffic lights work to cars, and planes, and like all things on the internet, every website, like all that was designed by somebody who just made it up. Maybe they used, you know, best practices and like of what came before and were inspired by things that came before. But like everything that we live in, the world we live in was created by human beings. And so I think oftentimes we get... Uh, in their default mode is in the consu- is the consumer mode, not the creative mode, and I think it's um, very inspirational to like snap back into the creative mode. I think there's a lot of people who inherently understand that, but I think one of the most painful things is when you get it, when you understand that you can create your own reality, but you're not living that in that moment. What advice do you have for people who understand the concept of like, yeah, everything I see was created by someone, but I can't compel myself to act to create a new reality for myself in this moment. Well, I mean, there's two elements of creating a new reality for yourself. One is having motivation and the other is having the skills to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Or the means to do it. And so, um, you know, there's probably remedies. If you lack those things, then there are remedies that if you lack the motivation, the number one thing that I found is like, uh, there's this often quoted, um, saying in Silicon Valley that you're the average of their five closest friends, right? So I think when you hang out with people who are creative or entrepreneurs or designers or people who design the world in some way, you become more like them. You know, one example is my brother, um, my younger brother, one of my younger brothers, uh, Dan, he like never wanted to start a company. He just ended up coming to Silicon Valley because that was the only job he could get back in 2009 after the GFC. And you know, he had no, really no interest in starting companies like when he got here. But later on, he did, we did start a company together because that was just the thing that all his friends were doing, you know. And then later, even later still, he started Cruise, the self driving car company. And so, you know, for somebody who never aspired to start a company, that's a pretty phenomenal success. And really, it's just because he put himself in the environment and the position where he's like around people who were doing it. And so, if you lack the motivation to make your design your, environment than like be around people who for whom that's like the cultural norm you know and then the second thing is if you don't have the skills you know either you can learn them and now on the internet there's like such a huge trove of knowledge and tutorials and teachings and youtube and ways to like learn any skill you know um like for example I, i've been learning to dj in the last couple of years and there's just so much, like, I don't, no one's teaching me. There's no, I mean, I think you can go to get classes and stuff for that, but it really, it's just, you know, you're messing around and then you look online and watch people do this on like online classes or, you know, almost or like watching people on Instagram or whatever, you know, just learning things from, from online. And then, you know, the other thing is if you don't have the skills, what I'm really good at particularly is like, I'm not, there's certain things I'm pretty good at, like maybe business strategy and, um, mentorship and stuff like that. And maybe some, you know, I used to be a decent programmer, but mostly what I'm good at is convincing people who are better than me at things to do them. <laughs> and so, you know, I think there's, you can be a catalyzer of other people's energy and effort is also a very valuable component of a successful project. Well, there's a, a tremendous skill to doing that. 
How do you yeah, go about? That's probably true. <laughs> how do you go about <laughs> convincing people who are better than you at some things to actually do what you want them to do? Uh, you have to paint a vision of the world that is compelling to people, and you don't need to necessarily know the entire path of how you get from A to B to paint the vision for them. You know, a lot of times it is how much belief you exhibit about how the world can be or how great a story about what you, how you explain, like why the, the world being a certain way is going to be a tremendous benefit and a, like a beautiful vision for this person. Um, and how, where they're, what their part in it is going to be and how they're going to feel when they're part of it and when they've seen their work come to life. And when I was young, when I was 23 years old, I had no real skills or real understanding of how the world worked. At, um, and so, you know, a lot of people took a belief, like I took it on faith, but I had a lot of, I was very fervent and I had a lot of energy. And so, you know, you don't necessarily have to know the entire path of how to get to the destination in order to sell people that this destination is worth going to. How different is the internet than you expected it to be? Like today versus 20 years ago when I started working on it. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know what I expected. I think it is like a lot more all encompassing in our lives than I probably ever anticipated in that, you know, you have your phone, people are pretty addicted to their phones. I'm probably one of them, you know, like I'm, you know, you're looking and communicating and reading and learning from your phone or from your computer, like all the, all day, every day, you know, except for times when I'm like really I'm getting outside. I'm going to, you know, do something outside. Um, and I think that's true of like, you know, some people might hear that statement and be like shocked and aghast, but I think most people realize that that's true for most people most of the time. Um, so I think, I think it's just like so per, you know, much more pervasive than I ever thought. Maybe that's, that's one thing. I also think people take it like way more seriously than I ever thought they would. Like, mm. you know, people are affected by the things that people say, you know, people who grew up in the internet maybe like 20 years ago or like used to people just being foul and horrible and sometimes and like not taking it too seriously. You know, I remember there was a lot of like people trolling each other on IRC chat rooms and stuff, you know. And so like I kind of all grew up in these like early MMOs and IRC where I just like thought that most people in the internet were probably lying to me at all times. And it was like very, I think the early internet was like somewhat collaborative, but also somewhat very adversarial. Hmm. And I think now people are kind of like, you know, when someone's, you feel like a lot of people like feel like they get bullied on the internet or things, you know, and it's like, they take it like real seriously or whatever, you know, which I mean, I understand, but like to me, that's maybe different than I expected. Yeah. It, it's hard and confusing to figure out how much is trolling, how much is real, how much like you're looking at a screen and it's like, what percentage of that screen is actually true? It's like, even looking at a photo, you're like, is that photo real? Which is before AI five, 10 years ago, you're like, well, now there's filters. So it's like, is, is what I'm even looking at reality? And I think that it is so close to reality that it confuses us sometimes into, do you have a thought on that? Yeah. I mean, I think the internet is kind of like a giant tabloid, you know, like mm. in some ways. And I mean, you don't even need AI to confuse and trick people. Like, so they, like with this Hawaii wildfires and people saying it's like an alien attack, you know, there were these photos that people showed of like what looked like beams of light coming down into like a fire or explosion or whatever. And it turns out that was like a, that was a disaster from a different place. It was like from Michigan or something. Like there were photos from like different times and different places you know, that, that were actual photos that were not Photoshop photos. And so, you know, it's just like people are very easily confused by <laughs> things. You know, you don't ha even have to Photoshop a photo or create an AI photo. You can just, you know, take a photo from somewhere else and be like, this is from here and, you know, make it viral. And I think that's actually part of the reason why meditation has risen so strongly is because if you cannot control or the external world that you're looking at is so hard to parse through, or you don't know if it's true, or it's a giant tabloid that you're living in, basically, you got to go back inward 
to what is reality that's going on in your emotional state because your emotions or what you're feeling in any given moment might not necessarily be quote unquote true, but you know that that is an anchor to give yourself. So I think, I think meditation is a, you know, on the rise for many reasons, but like our society today has a lot of triggers in it, you know? And what I mean by that is like, you know, like looking at the internet on Twitter or whatever, or Instagram, you're seeing a lot of things that are emotional triggers, not necessarily like negative ones, but sometimes negative ones, but also positive ones. You're like, you're getting pulled along in all these different directions. You're getting swept along to be like, Oh, I wish I was on this Italian vacation that my friend posts on Instagram, or I see they read this article about, you know, whatever political party you're not part of and being, you get super pissed about it. And then, you know, you're, you're kind of being swept along by life and, Meditation is really about, you know, experiencing the things that happen in your life and not getting swept along by them, right? You can mm-hmm. kind of ex- see that, see them. The way I think about it is, um, you know, common metaphor. I, I didn't make this up. It's like, yeah, you're in most of life, you're in the, the river and you're getting carried along. And like the, the river is like the things that you experience, the, you know, physiological phenomenon, the experiences and the, the thoughts and feelings that you experience usually getting swept along by it and meditation is a tool to help you sit on the banks of the river and you still experience those things, but they, they kind of just float by, you know, you're not pulled along by them. So I think meditation for people is, you know, helps them, you know, experience all these triggers of life without having necessarily flying off the handle every time or getting swept along. So if I get this correct from doing research, I found out that you, you were meditating for some time, but then you did ayahuasca and then you started meditating a lot more seriously. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's probably right. Yeah. I wasn't that long meditating that long before I did ayahuasca, but I doing ayahuasca definitely helped me meditate, be more interested in meditation and, and learning about what the benefits of meditation were in my daily life. 